episode of How to Implement. Yesterday I did say we were doing Swing Wing September, so now we are kicking off with the first episode, and that is on the F111 Aardvark. People have been expecting this for a long time, and I personally feel that its time is imminent for War Thunder. But before it's added, we can at least discuss in what form it could be added. The Aardvark is a very interesting aircraft, and people often overlook that it served in both Vietnam and Iraq. It is one of the few aircraft to do so alongside the LVTA-7 and the F-4 Phantom. The F-111 Aardvark was born out of a joint Navy and Air Force requirement for a high-speed heavy armament two-seater aircraft. As the variable geometry design started to gain traction, this aircraft was also most likely to have it. The Department of Defense then issued a directive to both branches to cooperate in developing a single aircraft that could meet their respective requirements. This led to a decision where the Air Force could design the plane and would modify it for the Navy requirements. While they agreed on the variable geometry heavy armament high speed and two-seater requirements, the Air Force wanted a tandem seat aircraft a la F-4 Phantom for low altitude interdiction while the Navy wanted a side-by-side -side configuration that of the S-3 Viking for a high altitude interceptor which shared radar display with the pilot. As per the usual, every aircraft manufacturer in the U.S. submitted design proposals to meet both the Air Force and Navy standards, and General Dynamics won due to the commonality between their Air Force and Navy designs. The aircraft, officially designated the F-111, entered flight testing in 1963 and combat evaluation in 1968, participating in the last sorties of Operation Linebacker and in Operation Linebacker II. It left Vietnam with 4,000 combat missions and only 6 combat losses. These aircraft would serve until 1996 and would have many developments including an electronic warfare variant and a variant for the Royal Australian Air Force. The naval version designated F-111B was cancelled in 1968 in lieu of a more capable fighter which would eventually become the F-14 Tomcat. I would only be talking about the F-11A. C, D, and F variant as well as the FB-111, but I'll go over later about what to do with the F-111K as to how it would be added in War Thunder. The F-111 Aardvark is a twin-engine variable geometry interdictor built around huge payloads, four times that of an F-4 Phantom and high speeds at low flight. As such, the Mark I avionics suite used the AN-APQ-110 terrain following radar in conjunction with the ANAPQ-113 attack radar. Paired with the AJQ-120 inertial navigation system, this allowed for very effective low-altitude flight at very high speeds. The Mark I suite was mounted on the F-111A and F-111C until the F-111C undertook an independent avionics upgrade in the 1990s that included fitting a FLIR targeting system known as the PAVETAC. The Mark II suite was introduced in the F-111D variant in 1972 and replaced the AN-APQ-110 and AN-APQ-113 with the AN-APQ-130 attack radar and Doppler radar paired with the AN-APQ-128 terrain following radar. However, since the issues with the avionics more or less made the F-111D a bane more than a boon for the Air Force and caused delays, leading to the F-111E being introduced, the F-111F simplified its avionics with the Mark II B suite, utilizing the FB-111A simplified avionics. The F-111F would be fitted with the AN-APQ-144 radar and the AN-APQ-146 terrain following radar. In the 80s, it would started to be fitted with the AVQ-26 PAVTAC FLIR and laser designator, allowing laser-guided munitions to be guided by the aircraft. Speaking of the FB-111A, this was a strategic bomber variant which could carry 16,100 kilograms of bombs as opposed to 14,300 kilograms on the F-111F. The FB-111 would use an electronically agile radar precursor to the AN-APQ-164 passively electronically scanned array radar on the B-1B Lancer. The F-111 was fitted with incremental improvements of the Pratt & Whitney TF-30 engine. The F-111A, D, E were fitted with a TF-30 P-3 which had 82.29 kN of afterburning thrust. 
The later E variants, along with the F, received an engine upgrade to the TF-30P109 at 92.70 kN of thrust. All F-111 variants received the AN-ALE chaff and flare dispensers and the AN-APS-109RWR for the Mark I suite and the AN-ALR-62RWR on the Mark IIB suite. The F-111, being an interdictor and strategic bomber, did not fit an onboard gun. However, a 20mm M61 was sometimes installed on the weapons bay on all variants except the FB-111A and PAVTAC equipped F-111C and F-111Fs. It carried 750 rounds but, some took, up, but took up some space allotted for the bombs in the weapons bay. Its use was seldom necessitated and in 1983, they omitted the gun entirely when the AIM-9 P-4 was fitted for self-defense. For air-to-air -air missiles, the F-111A was fitted with AIM-9G Sidewinder missiles. The F-111C would receive the AIM-9P and eventually the AIM-9P-4 all-aspect missiles. Very late variant, F-111Cs also used the AIM-9M Sidewinder. The F-111D and F used the AIM-9J as well, but eventually upgrading to the AIM-9L until it was withdrawn from service in 1996. There were talks of fitting AIM-7 Sparrows on the F-111, and the radar could certainly guide them, but it was never fitted. The ground ordnance of the F-111 consists of 14,300 kilograms of munitions, which include Mark, II, Mark 82 500-pound bombs, Mark 83 1,000-pound bombs, Mark 84 2,000-pound bombs, and the Mark 117 750-pound bombs. For guided bombs, the F-111 could carry the entire suite of Paveway bombs, GBU-10, GBU-12, and GBU-28. It would also carry the GBU-15 electro-optical bomb and the G AGM-130, a rocket-boosted version of the GBU-15. The FB-111 could carry about 16,100 kilograms of the same munitions, albeit including the AGM-69, nice, thermonucle thermonuclear thermonuclear SRAM, which I don't think should be in-game. The F-111 is a very desired aircraft and I believe that it can be added at the next update, without the all-aspect missiles. Although I bet Gaijin would start including them in the next update, so why not? GBU-15 and the rocket-boosted AGM-130 are the US analogs of the CAB-500 and K-29T on the MiG-27. The amount of bombs it could drop is crazy and the PAVTAC system allowing it to use the PAVWAYS and GBU-15 and AGM-130 greatly boosts lethality in ground battles. As an aside, the PAVTAC system was also mounted on the F-4E, allowing it to use the GBU-15 and PAVWAY as well. This makes the F-111 a perfect addition to the attacker and bomber line for the US tree. F-111C could be a good replacement for the V-bomber on the bomber line after the Buccaneer. It would mark the first RAAF exclusive aircraft on the non-premium tech tree. I highly doubt that Gaijin would add 4 F-111 variants in the US tree. The F-111A, F-111D, F-111F, and FB-111. But on the off chance they do, the F-111A could be a 10.7 after the A-7D. The F-111D, however, is the variant that I don't see being added in-game, as it doesn't have very useful differences as um, in terms of electronics and avionics that are in-game from the F-111A. So it will occupy either the F-111A's place, and the F-111A becomes an event vehicle, or vice versa. The F-111F should sit at sit should sit at 11.0 with the PAVTAC system. The FB-111A could be after the B-57B at tier 7 at 10.7. So we've done all F-111 variants I see being added. So let's talk about the F-111K. The F-111K only had two unfinished examples built before the project was cancelled. Since I don't think the F-111K should be in-game, lest we make another R2-Y2 but for the UK tree. The, FB the F-111B had more samples and actually flew, but I don't think that should be added now as well. Although, in the future, if, if the 
if the Fox 3 system is perfected, I can see the F-111B being added in War Thunder. As for research costs and research points, I believe the F-111A should be at 340,000 RP, the DNF at 390,000 RP, the F-111C at 340,000 RP, and the FB-111A at 340,000 RP. The AC and FB-111 should cost 1,040,000 to purchase and 300,000 to crew. And the DNF at 1,060,000 and 300,000 to crew. The F-111 Aardvark is what I think is the MiG-27 taken to its maximum level. It's going to be a very capable ground attacker in ground battles, especially with the paid tech system not only being electro-optical, but also a thermal sight and laser designator. Initially, I wanted to do the Panavia Tornado for the first leg of Swing Wing September, so that I could cover Germany, UK, and Italy, but I got more requests for the F-111A and I felt compelled to do it. Since the event is tomorrow, I'll be, sh I'll be sure to... Um, set aside some time and balance my time in order to put out videos while doing the event. Again, thanks for watching. This is the Dr. MD, leading for landing.